Welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast, the photo imaging industry's leading news source. Here's your host, Gary Peugeot. The Dead Pixel Society podcast is brought to you by Media Clip, Advertech Printing, and School Photographers of America. Hello again and welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. Today we're joined by Joe Montalbano, the co-CEO of Advertech Printing in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Hi, Joe. How are you today? I am well. And how are you, Gary? Doing great. Doing great. It's, so it's actually Vaughn, Ontario. Okay. Uh, well, Vaughn, Ontario, then. I, You know, I've been there. I should know that because you have yes. two beautiful facilities there. Exactly. So first, tell us a little bit about Advertech and your journey to start the business, because you've been in business now over 20 years. Yeah, we essentially, my business partner and I uh, were with two other companies. We weren't happy where we were, and we decided to want to leave and start our own company. And we found a small company at the time that was six people. Uh, called Advertech, and we bought the company in June of 1999. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, slowly grew the company to where we are today. So pre-pandemic, we were about 70, and now we're about 65, uh, bringing some folks back. Um, so we've grown the company along the way, including the acquisition of Avertech. We've done a few other acquisitions mm-hmm. and we've always considered ourselves the little big company. So we operated like a big company, but we were a small company. When you bought the business in 99, what were the primary markets it was serving? Um, the company was doing litho. They had an old 25 uh, inch litho press. What we did is we, uh, we we kept it, but we brought in some new technology at the time it was called the Heidelberg Speedmaster DI direct imaging on on plate. Mm-hmm. And we we essentially went after the short run full color market. Mm-hmm. Um, we had just missed the old film day. So we weren't doing film. We were doing direct to plate. Mm-hmm. And um that's how we we started being a short run printer. But from there, you also got into direct mail and other opportunities. That's really where I think you said you've said your your company's grown has been in that business. So it was sort of early digital, if you will. Yeah. So uh, along the ways we've grown, we brought in a larger press. At, well, we've been a Heidelberg shop. We're uh, we're always being a Heidelberg shop. So mm-hmm. um, and we did an acquisition and when we did the acquisition we uh propelled into getting into the mailing the wide format the small format um so we essentially are doing more than just litho so we're doing all the different types of printing Mm -hmm. from small to large format digital and the litho Mm -hmm. and how how have the customers changed in that part of the business over the years because i imagine that you know once the technology changed the types of customers you serve changed? Well, that, that's a great question, Gary. And I think what's happened is a lot of those long runs disappeared. Mm-hmm. And the you know what our customers wanted was short run, full color, and they wanted it quick. Mm-hmm. And that's what we were really good at. Mm-hmm. But the long runs, they, you know, there's still some out there, mm-hmm. but a lot of them are pretty well gone. Mm-hmm. You and I have met because you've gotten into the photo space. You're actually a provider of personalized photo products on a wholesale basis. How did you get into that business? Well, we always looked at how we can do online business, whether it was non-photo. And we had an opportunity through some colleagues of ours that said there was a need for a a reputable responsible uh, (laughs) photo provider that Mm -hmm. is able to, you know, quickly uh, adapt and and, and join the market. Mm -hmm. So what was that first product that you brought in to serve that customer? Because photo is slightly different in terms of the color management and what the expectations are and that sort of thing. So what was the first thing you brought in? The first thing were, were, were digital, uh, digital, printed items on paper and dye sublimation. Those were the, we dove into dye sublimation Mm -hmm. Uh, because of our background. I mean, we're, we're a color managed company and because we come from the print industry uh, where most of our competitors in the photo industry are in the lab. 
So we felt we had a huge advantage in mm -hmm. understanding and translating that to proper color. Mm -hmm. So that's where, you know, when we would put our product up against other folks that were so-called labs, we felt we had a far superior product. Mm -hmm. Did you have to adjust your workflow a great deal to make that transition or was it a, a smooth transition? Uh, I mean, every year um, that we've, we've done this, we've, we've learned and we've gotten better <laughs> at it, mm -hmm. but we, you know, we are in the background. We just receive and fulfill orders and we've developed a, a backend system that is pretty slick. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it does a lot, it has a lot of great features. So where I believe even some of these big companies probably don't have what we have in terms of the way our backend system works. And what would be an example of a benefit the customer would have from using that system? This system allowed us to remove any manual type labor. Mm -hmm. So everything's done automatically. So we collect all the orders, we process them automatically, no labor, no human thinking at all, no, no, no people sending them to the printer, mm -hmm. except for when we batch. Um, but it does like, for example, um, we can do rate shopping for our shipping. Mm -hmm. So we can basically pick the, the, the best, most economical method and ship it, whether it's across Canada or in the U.S. Mm -hmm. We've got full reporting. We've got auto impos imposition. Mm -hmm. uh, we easily, easily integrate with other folks and other carriers mm -hmm. easily, mm -hmm. um, whether using their APIs or using our APIs. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so those are just some of the things. So so, so getting back to the products, you brought in Dye Sub. Uh, which is primarily mugs and ornaments and that kind of thing, right? Yeah, it would be drinkware and wall decor. Mm -hmm. So those are essentially the items that we're doing. And that's, you know, we've developed other products since then, whether they're puzzles mm -hmm. um, or like you said, ornaments, mm -hmm. so all different kinds. Mm -hmm. And you also do stuff on fabric too. Is that correct? Yeah. Because you do blankets, exactly. which is actually a hot item. And in the last year or so, we've had one of the major vendors on that disappear from the market unexpectedly. So you were able to jump in on that. We did. So we, you know, we can do uh, all different types of fabrics, whether they're um, a small rally towel or a large blanket uh, and all different types of blankets, different types of towels. So we can do all these different things and we can do them economically, efficiently and with Great quality. So your major production facility, as I recall, you've got two in uh, Vaughan. I'll get that correct this time. <laughs> in Ontario. We have in, two Ontario, Ontario. in Ontario, right. And uh, But one of them is the photo, has the photo stuff yeah. in it, correct? So we, we have our main, our head office is in Vaughan, where we have our litho, uh, all our customer service reps, our estimators, uh, our pre-press operators. Um, and then in in Brampton, which is 10 minutes from here, mm -hmm. uh, we have our digital shop, which is uh, mm -hmm. we, we do fulfillment, we do our uh, print on demand business, mm -hmm. and that's where it all is. And the reason why is we didn't have enough room here. We had done an acquisition, so we decided to, we couldn't combine the two buildings together. Right. So we separated Litho from digital, essentially, and mm -hmm. print on demand. So that must have been an interesting uh, challenge because you're operating two facilities but you want to keep your your labor at a at a low level if you can so that must have been a kind of a management challenge absolutely and you know we have a manager there we have our uh, our, our operations manager that goes back and forth mm. but what we really try to do is eliminate a lot of the thinking the human thinking and the labor mm -hmm. and become you know really really good at not having to have human intervention mm -hmm. and interrupting the workflow of orders. Right. You want humans on the front end ordering products, but not humans on the inside making the products, right? Exactly. So but, one, of, one of the areas that you mentioned earlier was fulfillment. You know, even though you're in Canada, you do have the ability to ship inside the U.S. very economically. Can you talk about how you develop that? I mean, we ship across Canada and every time our customers would come, they say, wow, it's so expensive, you know, like in, within Canada. And there's really not much we can do. Right. We had customers wanting us to ship into the U.S. So we started looking at that. So what we did is we opened up a depot in, in 
Buffalo, New York. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a, a depot in Buffalo, New York that we can seamlessly ship in, in the US. And what's, what's sad, but good for us is we can ship items like within four or five dollars of a package within the, anywhere in the U.S. Mm -hmm. where we can barely do that in Ontario, let alone the rest of Canada. And, you know, the U.S. and we do this through USPS and it's seamless. Mm -hmm. When when we we label everything and it's like it's coming from the from Buffalo and it's it's easy, it's seamless mm -hmm. and there's no problems. The customer will receive it. Mm -hmm. On behalf of their uh, whoever they ordered the online, mm -hmm. they receive it, mm -hmm. and there's no customs, there's no duties, there's no nothing. Mm -hmm. Where we hear when the U.S. vendors are trying to ship into Canada, they have nothing but a nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they they have to pay duties when they're delivered, and mm -hmm. but for us, going to the U.S. is easy and seamless. Mm -hmm. So for for a U.S. brand who's looking to service Canada, you're an option, but you're also an option for a U.S. brand who wants to service the U.S. Absolutely, right. absolutely. And we're strategically located. We're an hour from the border. Mm -hmm. We have deliveries that go to our Buffalo location three times a week, and it goes directly into the mail stream. Mm -hmm. So there's no holdups. As you've grown in the photo merchandising category, what are some of the things that you think are coming down the pike that could be some of the hot product opportunities because just personally I was just talking to some of the brands that I uh that I talked to and they were saying for example uh for some reason uh ornaments were huge this year this past year books seem to be coming back especially the higher end premium books lay flat and those kind of things do you are you seeing that as well with your customers uh we're not seeing a lot of lay flats but I think the the, the mainstream type products mm -hmm. are still going strong, whether they're books for drinkware or mm -hmm. wall decor, there are uh, puzzles. I mean, the puzzles through the pandemic did really, really well, right. um, but they tapered down now. But what's surprising were greeting cards, like yeah. greeting cards. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable how many greeting cards uh, were moving. Now, are you doing them only for obviously the the Christmas holidays and that, but I mean, it's a year round sort of thing. Are you seeing any year round greeting cards happening? We are. So, I mean, the holiday obviously peaks in Q4. However, there are throughout the rest of the year for weddings and other anniversaries and other functions that they do. So they are popular, uh, definitely peaks in, in Q4. Which... Yeah, yeah. But that's some of the things I'm starting to hear from a lot of people is, and they may not even even have a photo on it, but just ju just the personalized card for a certain uh, occasion, like you said, a wedding or an anniversary or something like that, really seems to be taking off, which is weird in the world of electronic communication. Right, right. You're absolutely right. But what's also surprisingly were calendars. Mm -hmm. Calendars have consistently year over year have grown and are still in demand. Mm -hmm. So people love their calendars, whether they're desk or wall, uh, they want their calendars. Mm -hmm. They love their calendars. And they, I mean, they're ordered throughout the year, but they definitely peak towards the end and the beginning of the year. Right. And why do you think that is? Because, because again, everything moves moving electronically. You don't need uh, to send paper to send a greeting. You certainly don't need, you know, everyone's got a calendar on their phone. You certainly don't need a wall calendar, but some of these products just have a life of their own why do you think that is well people tend to see say that printing is printing's dead but it's not if you look around we're surrounded by print mm -hmm. and people want to be able to touch and feel uh and give that personal message whether it's through a greeting card or they or have a calendar of their loved mm -hmm. ones or mm -hmm. favorite cars whatever mm -hmm. it's, it's just amazing to me when i when, when i again i have that same, same conversation i've had with conversation with people outside the industry looking in and they hear about industry events or about this big retailer exit in the category or something else and they'll go oh you know printing's dead and i said actually it's it's booming in so many ways because there's so many places you can print now that are beyond just a four by six piece of paper um you know i have a friend of mine who has a lab who does very well with photo golf balls i mean it's just you yeah. know it's almost up to the creativity of the service provider to come up with those opportunities and merchandise them. 
it's it's endless and you can't be everything to everybody mm -hmm. so it, it's you know what we try to do is focus what we're really really good at right. and try to stay within that mm -hmm. and and continue on i mean that's essentially what we want to do we want to be doing more of everything that we're doing yeah but I love, but the reality is is you're kind of tapped into the vibe into the outsource trend right now where retailers are brands who may have been vertically integrated um are realizing because of the breadth of product out there they just can't offer it all so they are looking for outsource partners Absolutely. And as you know, the, the market's changing where some players are removing themselves from the market. So it opens it up for other people. Mm -hmm. But there's other folks that are coming into the market that are looking for folks like us that are behind the scenes that just fulfill. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole thing. I mean, everyone has their role to play. And I think it's even becoming less advantageous for some people to try and be all of the things to own the technology stack and own production and try and own the customer as well that's a lot of cost yeah you can you can't be everything to everybody right so i think you know do do what you can do well and you'll be successful so if people want to be successful and do business with advertech how how would they go about doing that that's a great question. I mean, it would start with a phone call. Give us a call. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, we'd have to see if there's a fit, number one, if mm -hmm. there's a good fit for mm -hmm. what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, if there's a fit, if there's a fit and mm -hmm. we're the right fit mm -hmm. for them and vice versa. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you've integrated already with some platforms and you're already working with a lot of industry partners right now. So it's not uh, a difficult mm -hmm. challenge. No, I mean, we have our own set of APIs. Uh, we have an experienced IT team that can easily integrate with other folks into their APIs or our own. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've, you know, we, we, we feel that we have a great backend system that can manage uh, all the fulfillment orders, full reporting and SLAs and, you know, all that. So we're, we're in tuned in terms of mm. being able to offer a wide variety of products, quality products, uh, but at the same time, being able to deliver within a reasonable amount of time. Great. Well, thank you, Joe, and best wishes for a uh, the upcoming year and look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Gary. We appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. Read more great stories and sign up for the newsletter at www.thedeadpixelssociety.com.